uh, well, I would hope in 50 years' time that we are still the fiercely independent company that we are, that we are still pushing the boundaries of what's possible in home audio, um, that we are still a champion for the single greatest human art form, which is music. Welcome to StereoNet. We're here in Melbourne at the StereoNet Hi-Fi and AV show, and I'm fortunate to be joined in the studio with Gordon Inch, the brand ambassador for Lynn Products. Welcome, Gordon. It's a pleasure to have you here in Australia. Thank you. It's my first time back at the show since 2019, so delighted to be back here. Welcome. Congratulations on reaching the 50th year for Lynn, launched in 73. That's a milestone in the audio industry, which few companies ever see. Is there a buzz inside Lynn? and how is that being celebrated? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, there's been a, a huge buzz. Um, 50 years in business, still an independent family-owned business. Uh, that's an achievement we're very proud of, uh, the Lynn factory back in, in Glasgow. Um, we had quite a birthday party at the beginning of this year with our, our friends in the industry. Um, and of course, we launched the very special limited edition LP1250 turntable, a collaboration between Lynn and uh, ex-Apple empresario, so Johnny Ive, uh, a product designed to celebrate those five decades. Our publisher, Mark Rushton, uh, joined Lynn's Michael O'Rourke uh, on Australian Radio earlier this year to celebrate the launch of the 50th anniversary 360 loudspeaker. You might have seen that video already, uh, but the 360 was very well received around this country. How has that product been going for Lynn around the world? The reception to 360 globally has been spectacular. It's everything we hoped it would be and more. Um, my colleagues and I, like Michael, have been on a bit of a roadshow, uh, letting people really hear what 360 is capable of. And that's led to more than a few guests at events struggling with explaining to their significant other why they need a, a new pair of reference loudspeakers. The most famous Lynn product you've mentioned, the Sondek LP12, in its 50th year of production. Um, how has Lynn been able to keep reinventing the product to be at the forefront of analog playback? Well, the Sondek LP12 is less reinvention, it's more a continual process of evolution. Um, we've always uh, sought to hire bright, enthusiastic and daring minds at Lynn and task them to innovate, and innovate they have. And the LP12 has had over 50 innovations and upgrades over the course of those five decades. Um, that shows no sign uh, of slowing down. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. You know, we're really excited at what, about what's capable from vinyl right into the future. Lynn diversified into amplifiers and speakers early on. Was this to generate a Lynn system and sort of a house sound or for other reasons? Um, probably the opposite to a trademark sound. We've always desired to produce music uh, with as little distortion and, and coloration as possible. Um, to do that, you need to have complete control over the signal pathway from source all the way to playback. Hence the desire uh, for an all-in system. Um, that reduction in distortion is still a, a big focus at Lynn and is one of the main design goals of a, the 360 loudspeaker, for example. Lynn also embraced multi-room audio way back in 1994. How did that concept come about? Well, Lynn tasked our engineering team uh, in 1991 uh, with the creation of a, a system to share audio from one room to another. Um, our engineers expanded on that deliberately open question and created a basic four zone uh, system and an RCU, a room control unit. We took that technology and implemented that in our then prototype LK uh, series products, Cairn, Kremlin, Carrick. Um, and we expanded that later with the Connect Intersect that could then share up to 16 uh, sources with up to 128 zones. Mm -hmm. So very much a, a product ahead of its time. Um, in fact, one of the early adopters of Connect is a certain Prince Charles who went on to bigger and better things of late. 
It's been clear that Lynn's always at the forefront of technological advances. And as they emerge uh, in the industry, for such an iconic and legacy brand, this is impressive. Is it the vision of just one person or is there a team responsible for the future thinking and vision of Lynn? It's very much a, a team effort. Um, everyone at Lynn has a voice and while we obviously have a, a roadmap of products that we're working towards in the years ahead, suggested by our design and engineering teams, anyone at Lynn can and, and, and they do make suggestions. So whether that be uh, a process, uh, manufacturing process improvement or perhaps a new product idea uh, or even a, a catchy name that we can shoehorn the letter K into, uh, anyone uh, can make a suggestion on any uh, aspect of Lynn's business. Similarly, in 2009, Lynn decided to cease production of CD players. It's just as important to realise when technology is shifted as to see where technology is headed. How did Lynn determine that streaming was the right pathway for digital? Well, we very much have the foresight of our CEO, Gilad Tiefenbrunn, to thank for that. He joined Lynn in 2003 as our Director of Engineering and, and he could see what the high-speed networks that we were all starting to install in our homes was really capable of. That vision led to the first audiophile streamer, Climax DS, in 2007. At the same time, we could see sales of our physical CDs from Lynn Records start to decline, where sales of sonically superior studio master downloads of the same albums start to increase. Um, in 2009, uh, sales of CDs and downloads were very, very different. Downloads were a much bigger part of the business. And that really gave us the confidence to end CD player production in that year. So Lim was an early adopter of active speakers and room equalization. Can you describe the evolution in capability of the Lin active speakers and the room equalization? I think many people in, in the industry, they saw the advantages of active speakers. Uh, but Lynn's unique mix of engineering skills uh, meant we were uniquely placed to create active speakers. Uh, to create an active speaker, you need knowledge of not just acoustic and cabinet design, but filter design, thermal management, amplifier design, power supply design. Um, couple that with the advances that digital signal processing brought in with our exact technology, and we were able to do things like uh, drive unit matching that are simply not possible in an all analog speaker. Um, exact also led on to space optimization or room correction software uh, later on that allows customers to eliminate the negative effects that their listening room uh, has on that system. Just to expand on that, so the equalization capability has changed obviously in the past 25 years. So with the development of increased DSP digital signal processing, uh, and I guess the processing power of computing in general and getting smaller, what does that bring to the consumer and what can Lin provide to the consumer? Well, we introduced the very first version of our room correction technology space optimization in 2015. Uh, whilst it uh, was a very powerful tool, it did, it did have some limitations, um, mostly uh, that it could only deal with rectilinear rooms. Uh, 2018 brought version two of that particular product. Uh, it's an extremely powerful tool that can deal with any size, shape, construction of room uh, and really help take away those negative effects that the room can create. So if you're a, a Lin DS owner who bought their product in 2007, suddenly you've got the opportunity to reinvigorate that system and tune it specifically to the room that it finds itself in. So from Lynn's perspective, what are the similarities in design, manufacture and marketing of top flight analog and digital products? We approach products identically, whether they are analog or digital. There may be some different skills required, but the goal is to extract the maximum amount of information from any source format whilst increasing fidelity by reducing distortion and coloration wherever we can. So no real difference in approach between analog and digital. The Sondek moniker has been used uh, only for Lin's premium audio products and it's been used twice, the LP12 and the CD12. Is there a plan for a next Sondek moniker use and which product would be honoured with that? Uh, well, I think if I was to tell you that, I'd be looking for a new job when I got back to Lin HQ in Glasgow. Okay. <laughs> 
We mentioned that Linda's celebrating its 50th anniversary. What do you think high-end audio will look like in 50 years' time? And what role do you hope Lin products will play in that? Uh, well, I would hope in 50 years' time that we are still the fiercely independent company that we are, that we are still pushing the boundaries of what's possible in home audio, um, that we are still a champion for the single greatest human art form, which is music. Um, the only downside is that I'm not going to be around to hear what we do for our 100th anniversary in 2073. Finally, we're asking our guests to put forward just one question for the other audio manufacturers uh, in our interviews. Without knowing the brand or who the guest will be, what's one question you would ask our next guest? Um, I would say that 2022 was the first year since the introduction of CDs that vinyl records outsold that digital format. I would ask, what are you doing to welcome the second coming of vinyl? On behalf of Stereonet, thank you for joining us in Australia and thank you for attending this Stereonet Hi-Fi and AV show in Melbourne and your excellent insight into the Lynn brand. If viewers want more information, Gordon, about Lynn products, where can they go for that? They can visit lynn.co.uk, our website, that will tell them all they need to know about our brand, who we are, the products we make. It will also allow them to find their nearest Lynn dealer. Super. Thanks, Gordon. Pleasure.